welcome to this first online service from St. Columbus Church in Ennis with the Churches of Kilnasula and Christ Church, Spanish Point. This is something that we have intended to do for some time, but the temporary suspension of church services due to the coronavirus means that we are putting out these online services rather earlier than, than planned. As time goes by, we may move to live streaming of services, but for now, this is a way of staying in touch and worshipping with one another. We follow the service of the Word booklets that you can see and download on the website. So we start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Together we say, One thing have I asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? We seek him with all our heart, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? We seek him with all our soul, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? We seek him with all our mind, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? We seek him with all our strength, Christ have mercy. And so we say together, Christ as a light illumine and guide me, Christ as a shield overshadow and hold me, Christ below me, Christ above me, Christ beside me on my left and on my right. This day be within and around me, lowly and meek, yet all-knowing, all-powerful, Christ as a light Christ as a shield. Christ be with me on my left and my right. So let us pray the collect for this third Sunday of Lent. O God, the fountain of life, to a humanity parched with thirst, you offer the living water that springs from the rock, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Stir up within your people the gift of your Spirit, that we may proclaim our faith with freshness and announce with joy the wonder of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Chapter 4, beginning at verse 5. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. 
The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. For the hour is coming and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who must worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labour. Others have laboured, and you have entered into their labour. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Saviour of the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a long story, but an important one. On the face of it, the story has a rather simple, rather mundane beginning. A man is tired and thirsty. After a long journey, he stops by a well for a refreshing drink of water and asks a local to lend him their bucket. So far, so normal. However, the circumstances are anything but normal. Jesus is not quite, but almost on the run. The growing reputation of John the Baptist and Jesus' own disciples, baptizing increasing numbers of people, has reached the ears of the Pharisees and influential and potentially dangerous party. 
To start with, baptism of Jews is verging on the scandalous. It was normally a right reserved for those converting to Judaism to ritually cleanse them of their pagan profanity. And here are John and Jesus' disciples saying that being Jewish is not enough to make you clean and in good standing with God. Blasphemy. Almost as if God's covenant doesn't quite work. Also, the powers that be, both the Sadducees in the temple and the Pharisees, operating beyond the limits of the city, were deeply suspicious of anything or anyone that might rival, rival or challenge their hard-won and staunchly defended authority. So Jesus is trying to get back to Galilee, his home territory, by the shortest and quickest route, only that also takes him through semi-hostile territory. It is safer these days due to Roman rule and law and order. I am somewhat reminded of the scene from the life of Brian, what did the Romans ever do for us? But nevertheless, in a Samaritan town, he is not at all seen as a friend. Having common ancestors, Jews and Samaritans had sadly long since fallen out over the interpretation of scripture. Jews saw Samaritans as heretics, and you can imagine what the Samaritans thought about that. So here we are in an alien town, not liked, not welcome, not especially safe. And Jesus speaks to a Samaritan woman. Two taboos are simultaneously broken here. Firstly, he speaks to an unaccompanied woman, shocking in itself, and she is a Samaritan. To the pious listener, appalling. Give her her due, the woman is surprised that he would deign to speak to someone like her, but then she is no ordinary person, as the ensuing story subsequently reveals. She is also surprised because he asks for a drink of water and seems willing to share her bucket and jug, something a strictly observant Jew, fearful of ritual pollution, would never do. She also knows that this is no ordinary well. A legend surrounds it, that it was once visited by Jacob, and the water overflowed from the well in the miracle so he could drink. In fact, Jacob's well, as it is called, still exists today, covered now by an Orthodox church, and it is reckoned to be over 40 metres deep. Jacob and his people may well have been refreshed at this well, their bodies restored. But it transpires that Jesus is speaking of refreshment and life of quite a different kind. At first, the woman, however, thinks that Jesus is talking about a way in which flowing water will always be available, saving her this daily chore. And there follows a rather amusing byplay between the two of them. He tells her to get her husband, so he can explain things to her, and she replies that she hasn't got one. The language here is a bit too formal to catch the real mood, but I suspect it goes a bit more like this. I have no husband, she says. Well, I know that, Jesus replies. You've worked your way through five men already and you're not married to the bloke you're living with now. Now, many scholars interpret this evidence of his divine knowledge. After all, how else could Jesus know? And John reports that she certainly sees this as proof that Jesus is a prophet and a wonder worker. And that may well be so. But for me, the significance of this story actually lies in what comes next. She is clearly a game girl, no better than she should be, according to the old saying. She has certainly been quite bold with the male stranger Jesus. Also, as a Samaritan, her community worships at the local shrine at Mount Gerizim, accepting only Moses as the one true prophet, whereas Jesus insists that only Jerusalem is holy. Only there can God be properly worshipped, having once shared the same ancestors, the same foundational stories. They are now rival cities, rival religions. So in two ways, she is not respectable. Moral estrangement and religious estrangement. She is doubly condemned. 
And yet Jesus indicates that none of this really matters. The Samaritans may worship in one place, the Jews in another. She may be considered unworthy, a sinner beyond the pale, but Jesus tells her that all this is being rendered irrelevant, immaterial. For God sees past such superficial matters and instead looks into the very heart of a person. God is both above and beyond such petty prejudices and claims of religious, racial or moral superiority. Today's Gospel is a story of inclusion. The living water of which Jesus speaks is available to all, no matter where they worship, how or what they eat, or for that matter, who they happen to sleep with. What the disciples may be shocked at, the thought, Jesus tells them that no one is beyond God's love or acceptance. Neither the woman nor her Samaritan neighbours, who at her insistence come to hear Jesus, and many of whom come to believe in him. In God's harvest, no one is more loved, no one loved any less. The respect for those of high status, those who consider themselves favoured, first in the queue, those of pious and sanctimonious religious views have no exclusive claim on God's mercy. Jesus' presence in Samaria is no mere accident. It points to his mission, his calling, the realisation of his purpose on earth. To mediate God's love to all mankind, to transcend the barriers and obstacles that people continually erect between themselves and which threaten to prevent them from comprehending the truth that he came to reveal. That life, abundant, generous and eternal, is open, offered, freely given to all, no matter who they may be or how they have lived. That we are known, loved, accepted. That then is the task of our life, to acknowledge that truth, to welcome that gift, to accept that acceptance, to share in that love. Amen. So let us now declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in earth and in heaven is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and our neighbours and for the needs of the whole world. God our Father, in your love and goodness, grant us the help of your Spirit as we bring to you our prayers for the world and the healing of all mankind and creation. We praise you for the seamless sky and for the refreshing winds for the warming sun, for the driving clouds and the rains they bring. We praise you for the vastness of the oceans and for fresh running water, for the everlasting hills, for the trees and the grass which grows beneath our feet. We give you thanks for our senses by which we can see and enjoy the splendour of your world around us today and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our neighbours, our friends, our families, and for the people around us. 
with whom we work and share our daily lives. We pray for those who are old and lonely, those isolated because of ill health, and those who find it difficult to make friends or be accepted. Show us all what we can do to help and teach us to be good neighbours and true friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for your many miracles of healing, and we pray for all who administer to the sick and infirm. We bring before you, in a moment of quietness, those we know or love who are ill or in need at this time, and we name them in our hearts. We pray that they may find encouragement and peace, that their sorrows and concerns be transformed into comfort and their loneliness into fellowship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, be with all those who are grieving today over the loss of a loved one. May their sorrow be lit with the brightness of the resurrection. May they be assured that they will meet again those whom they have loved and lost a while. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We remember before God those who have died and light a candle to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and all-loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we pray to you through Christ the Healer for those who suffer from the coronavirus, COVID-19, in Ireland and across the world. We pray, too, for all who reach out to those who mourn the loss of each and every person who has died as a result of contracting the disease. Give wisdom to policymakers, skill to healthcare professionals and researchers, and comfort to everyone in distress, and a sense of calm to us all in these days of uncertainty and distress. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who showed compassion to the outcast, acceptance to the rejected, and love to those to whom no love was shown. Amen. And together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, make clear to us each road. Make safe to us each step. When we stumble, hold us. When we fall, lift us up. When we are hard-pressed, deliver us and bring us at last to your glory. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.